Hey guys, I'm Christiana Santos, one of the worship leaders at Peaceway Christian Center. Thank you for tuning in today. I'd like to introduce to you our pastor who's going to be sharing the Word of God with us. Please welcome Pastor David Childers. Hi friends. It's great to have you with us today for our sermon. And our sermon title is About Forgiveness. It's entitled, Teach Us to Pray, The Mandate to Forgive. Teach us to pray the mandate to forgive. Forgiveness means giving up all hope of a better past. That's by that famous theologian, Lily Tomlin. Well, actually an actress, comedian. <laughs> Friends, the past cannot be changed. It can only be healed. Jesus wants us to have that healing. That's why he commands his followers to understand and practice forgiveness. Uh, I've had the privilege to write a book about forgiveness. And I have been uh, studying and practicing forgiveness for over 49 years. And the book is entitled Forgiveness, It Is Not Optional. It's on Amazon for about $10. And uh, if that's if you want to get it. Folks, forgiveness is so true for Christians. If you've been offended or hurt or brutalized, and you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you must forgive the person or the group or the entity that has done this to you. You know, Jesus mandates and commands us to practice forgiveness. It's not optional. In the Lord's Prayer, which is a model on how we are to pray, Jesus states right in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And then at the cross, Jesus would utter the famous words, Forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. We are reminded Jesus taught on prayer a few years earlier, and now he's living out the reality of his teaching. Let's take a look at the most famous prayer in the history of the world. Matthew 6, 9 through 12. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Boy, that's so powerful. And then it goes on. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So our first point today is the Lord's Prayer teaches us to have already forgiven others when we come to God and ask for forgiveness for our sins. This teaches us to practice what I call the lifestyle of forgiveness. The lifestyle of forgiveness. You know, Jesus is emphatically stating the importance of us choosing to forgive those who've hurt and brutalized us. Sir William Temple correctly observed that only one petition in the Lord's Prayer, only one petition in the Lord's Prayer has any condition attached to it. It is the petition for forgiveness. So from God's point of view, it's a big deal that we forgive others if we expect God to forgive us. <laughs> Let's say it out loud to affirm this as truth. I must forgive others if I expect God to forgive me. One more time. I must forgive others if I expect God to forgive me. You know, to emphasize the importance of forgiving others, Jesus goes right on teaching about forgiveness after he finishes the Lord's Prayer. And this brings us up to our second point for today's sermon. If we do not forgive others, God will not forgive us. He emphasizes it in the next two verses, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, and this is the biggest uh, but in the Bible, but if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. How does a person make heaven, which is a sinless place, if their sins are still attached to them because they've not been forgiven by God? Don't let the brutal or terrible things someone has done to you keep you from heaven. Keep you from knowing God's love and joy and peace. 
living in unforgiveness will destroy not only your life, but your eternity. Don't let it. Embrace forgiveness and do what Jesus taught us to do. Well, how? Well, the truth sets us free. You know, the truth is painful. This is our third point. The truth sets us free. The truth is painful but necessary in order to be set free. Holding on to resentment is like drinking poison and waiting for your enemies to die. Now, that's an insight from Nelson Mandela. Now, your situation may be a little different, uh, but I want to share a story about a lady. Uh, I'll call her Emma. And I met, met her in Europe. Uh, she was at the seminar that, that I conducted on how to practice biblical forgiveness. So uh, Emma did not get healed because she did not know the truth about her cousin and her dad. She started with what she knew to be her truth. She was angry at Maria, her cousin, who was 13 years older than her. Now, Emma is unmarried. However, engaged to be married next year to a medical doctor. This is all back when it happened. Her cousin is married with children and is obviously very, very busy. See, Emma is extremely unhappy and angry at Maria because they never get together unless Emma gives the invitation. Her cousin never makes the overture to get together. So Emma needs to forgive her cousin. Forgive her for ignoring her, for devaluing her, and not loving her enough to spend time with her, for not calling her, for not walking down uh, stairs to say hello, uh, even though they live in the same building. She needs to forgive her for pretending to care about her. And then the final straw was she offered her wedding dress, uh, but she offered it to Emma's mother, not directly to Emma. <laughs> so Emma is being tortured by unforgiveness. And in the conversation, she was hurt and angry, feeling unloved and devalued. And she is referencing the fake gesture of her cousin, uh, letting her wear her dress. And so she says in a hurt anger regarding her cousin, blank her, blank her, blank her. She is so angry. She is hurtful and feeling devalued and unloved. And obviously when we're hurt, uh, hurt goes hand in hand with being, uh, with living in unforgiveness. So she told me that she has a lot of bad things in her that she wants to get rid of before she gets married. Wow, she's right in wanting to get healed before she gets married. She doesn't want to carry this poison into her marriage and then begin to project it onto her husband. And because she is so hurt, she has developed a hypersensitivity to new hurts, meaning she takes new offenses and those offenses create deeper hurt that would, not, that would not have injured her or would have been healed through forgiveness. So our fourth point is this. When we live in unforgiveness, hurts and hurts keep reoccurring, we may develop a hypersensitivity that may cause us to transfer or buried hurt or devastation to another person who's also hurt us. This is called transference or projection. So I sense that this offense committed by Emma's cousin was real, but disproportionate in her pain and the pain that it was causing her. So I began to ask questions about other people in her life. And then I asked her if her mom and dad loved her. And she said a firm and strong yes to her mom loving her, but a hesitant one to her dad loving her. <laughs> well, I found out whenever there's a hesitation, that usually means they're not sure if that person loved them. See, no one likes to admit that a mom or dad did not love them. Yet I constantly am running into this issue. One or both parents not loving a child. So here comes the truth, which was buried, but needed to be revealed. 
Because why? In order for her to be set free, to be healed, we had to have the truth. So finally, after a little discussion, she concluded that her dad loved her as best he could, but he wasn't loved. She wasn't loved. She wasn't loved by the father and that he didn't really possess the ability to love her, to give her that love. See, we cannot give what we ourselves do not possess. It turned out that her father did not love her. In fact, she was going to a therapist and the therapist encouraged that she wrote her dad a letter telling him how she feels when he says or does hurtful comments or actions. So the issues that we come up with that she needed to forgive her dad, uh, and these are her words, forgive dad for not loving me and not valuing me, not spending time with me, not listening to me, uh, not changing my school when I was bullied, for treating my mother badly, for hitting my brother and being harsh to him. Well, everything that we have listed, anger, hurt, fear, and feeling unloved and valued, well, she experienced with her cousin, but was first created by her, her father, her dad. So prior to our meeting, she did not realize her dad did not love her. She was not living in the truth, so she couldn't be set free. So dad needed to be forgiven in order for real freedom and healing to be realized. See, the goal of forgiveness is to get healed. So forgiveness will give us the ability to get rid of the negative emotions like hate, resentment, hurt, feeling unloved, devalued, anger, bitter. All these negative emotions will lose their hold on us when we reach the state of forgiveness. So here's the model forgiveness prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I choose to forgive and say the person's name or the group's name for and then specifically say what they did. I don't feel like forgiving and say the name or, or the entity, but I choose to do so out of obedience to Jesus Christ. I choose to forgive by my will because the Lord wants me to. And I want to be more like Christ in every way. I understand that I forgive for Christ, not because, and then you say their name again, deserves it or wants it. Since I'm choosing to forgive, I affirm that, say their name, did hurt me. He, she, they is are guilty of hurting me. But through Christ, I choose to forgive him, her, them. In the name of Christ, I pray this prayer. Amen. And remember, aphemi is the Greek word for forgiveness, and it means to release. You're releasing the person that hurt you and brutalized you. You're releasing them to God. And God says he'll take care of any vengeance or he'll take care of what they need to have in their lives because God is big enough to do that. Well, years later, I ran into Emma and she was so grateful. She'd been married now a number of years, had a baby and uh, the forgiveness message really helped her and she was able to forgive her dad her dad didn't start treating her better, but she was able to forgive him of past and present and even in the future, anything that he did to hurt, does to hurt her or did to hurt her. And now she's set free because she's healed because she's reached the state of forgiveness. And she just expressed to me how grateful she was about being taught the forgiveness lifestyle and the forgiveness prayer. And she implemented it and it healed her because that's the God we serve. He heals us. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you. We ask that uh, we would be people that are obedient to your forgiveness message. Oh God, may we be set free so that we can learn to love and experience miracles that you do, oh God. For forgiveness allows us into the upper echelon where God lives in the law of love. We move from the law that's in the Bible to the law of love. And Lord, you set us free. And then we begin to see how God, you move through our lives and in us 
and heal us and our life is so much better and then we're able to help others. Lord, I just pray uh, anyone that is listening to this message that they would uh, write down the words and put it on their phone or put it on a piece of paper uh, of the forgiveness prayer and begin to implement it. And may they pray the prayer every time they feel, remember the offense and remember how they got hurt and uh, any negative emotion. That's a sign from the Holy Spirit that they need to forgive right then. And may we go through the process of forgiveness until we reach the state. Well, Lord, we thank you for your powerful message. Help us to be fully devoted followers of Christ. In Christ's name we pray. May we forgive as you've taught us. In Jesus we say this, amen. Hey friends, have a great week in the Lord, and we'll see you next week. Hi, this is Pastor David at Peaceway Christian Center here in Las Vegas. I wanna welcome our online community, whether you're joining us from Las Vegas or any state in the union or anywhere in the world, welcome. We're so glad you're here. If you'd like the chance to partner with us and financially sow into the ministry, we have the information below. This channel is where you're going to find weekly sermons and special events. And as always, you're welcome to come to church. I'll save a seat for you. God bless you. Hope to see you soon.